Hello Galaxy Commanders and welcome to this video for Infinite Galaxy. Today is finally the day we will do or we will talk about the flagship tier list for PvE. So first PvE flagship tier list. Um, as you can see I finished my lucky wheel. Um, don't forget to buy your three um, spins every day. We get one spin for free at the beginning, then we can buy three times three spins. That means you get a total of 10 spins without spending money. So you get 25 blueprints plus whatever you get in these um, spins. So I managed to get a total of 53 blueprints, meaning I can now start building my Poseidon. Um, and I think you already know it. Um, after we all complained, Camel did add it into the blueprint shop, so it is now available here. You can buy blueprints for it, um, like for most of the other flagships. So this said, let's dive into the tier list. Um, I did already prepare it, so we do not spend too much time, and here we are. So first of all, S tier for PvE, as you all already expected is the Prometheus. The Prometheus is the best flagship available when we talk about PvE. Very quick um, disclaimer here, what did I do? Um, I did, let's take a look at the flagships. And um, this is very different from my old flagship tier list. I did now take into consideration, first of all, that legendary flagships have a total of five slots. So all the values are calculated that all equipment slots are at the end um, unlocked and you can use all of them. Second, um, that's also one of the reasons why I had to rework my tier list. We now have total warship attack on our first skill. It is not um, weapon based anymore. This is amazing. This is great. It allows us so much more flexibility when it comes to setting up our flagships. And um, I really love this. Also, when we just talk about what I love, did you notice a small symbol here on the bottom left? We now see directly which tier our flagship is and the number of stars we have. Great job, Camel. I really like this. Um, second thing I had to take into consideration is the awakened skill. Um, we now can unlock an awakened skill and um, this can give huge buffs for the Prometheus, minus 40% total warship attack. Um, this comes with, um, where do we have it, attack for 5 seconds and the cooldown is 12 seconds. So when the fight starts after 12 seconds, this effect takes place for 5 seconds Then we do have another 12 seconds cooldown. So meaning um, after the first time it take it comes again every 17 seconds. So 5 out of 17 seconds this skill is active and I had to take this into consideration. Um, one thing that is very difficult to take into consideration are skills in special like this. Um, Things where you only get a buff while your HP is higher than a certain percentage. With an old battle system where cruisers could stay behind frigates and honestly never got damaged um, as long as there were frigates in the fight, you had this buff on nearly 100% of the time. So this was great. And it's a huge buff up to 100% additional warship attack. This is really big. Um, now it depends very very strongly how you build your fleet. If you put 70% mixed, let's say 15% um, um, frigates and 15% destroyers, these two they will die very very quickly if you attack anything that got a mixed fleet because of the new battle mechanics and then the skill will be gone after maybe 3 or 4 seconds and the total fight lasts maybe 30 seconds. So it's very important to keep in mind um, what kind of buffs you have and how you can use them. I assume now that 70% at the moment means that you have 70% um, of the time below. So um, for 30% this buff is on, for 70% of the time this buff is off. 
Um, this should work quite okay in bigger groups when you do like um, fighting, if you have a full cruiser fleet, you have an alliance event and this should work fine because everyone will bring some different um, fleets inside there. You will have um, brigades, you will have destroyers, so that should work. If you do fight for yourself alone, you have to keep in mind and make sure that you set up your fleet in a way that you do not drop immediately under the 70%. Okay, so that was already a long talk about um, how I do it or what I did there, but I think it's necessary that you understand this. So the Prometheus is top tier. Um, it is the best flagship we have available there. Um, second tier, A tier, Cyclops, Artemis, Hades. As just showed to you, the Cyclops is a little bit tricky there. You have to make sure that you keep your fleet for an as long time as possible above the 70%. So you get this buff up yeah, for most of the time. B tier, and this might surprise some people. We have Achilles, Titan, Odysseus. Achilles is a really, really good ship for PvE. Um, I did mention this already some time before. And I will switch over to the game again just to show you um, why the Achilles is such an amazing ship for PvE. Um, second skill doesn't help you gather resources. Third skill is warship attack 100% without any condition besides that it is PvE. So this is always active. There's no requirement to be above or below a certain percentage of HP. Um, then we have planet development, but then the last skill is an HP without any condition. 75% additional HP. So that means you do have two unconditioned um, skills there. Two of the strongest, attack and HP. These are the strongest skills you can get without any condition. And they are not shared. As soon as a skill is shared, um, we can see this in... Um, for example, the Artemis. As soon as a skill is shared, you have two of these. These values, they drop, um, they, they are lower. You, there are some ships you can check this, like here, um, Frigate HP. Um, you will see, usually you get only half of this. So you get the full benefit of an HP buff and an attack buff. And the vacant skill is also pretty strong. It's an 11 seconds cooldown, 5 seconds um, duration, 36% less attack for the enemy. Um, that's the reason why we are so high there. Mentioned before, this is PvE. Keep this in mind. Um, in PvE, as you all know, Titan, um, Odysseus, Poseidon, Hephaestus, they all have the disadvantage that a lot of their skills are not active because they only work in PvP. So, on the C um, tier, we do have Hercules, um, Orion. The reason why these are so low is you do get a much lower weapon buff for the first skill. And as this is now an, a general attack buff, it's just a huge advantage for our legendary flagships. We have one less um, equipment slot. And we don't have the vacant skill. So that's the reason why the epic flagships really dropped down quite a lot compared to the last tier lists I made. We do have Poseidon, Hephaestus, same thing there. They are strongly focused on PvP, therefore their skills are not all active in PvE. On D tier list, so that's already things that you might not really want to use. Um, you all know probably that I use Prontus and also the Atlas. Um, but for PvE, Athena, Prontus, Apollo, Atlas, Radamantis, they are not really that good anymore. Um, I don't want to say that they are that you can't use them. You still can use them. But they are not top tier anymore. And um, the last ones that you don't want to use in PvE are Tezos, Nemesis. You never want to use a Nemesis. Anyhow, Jason, Pelios, and Argo. Um, what else should I mention? Um, especially when we compare the top three here. Um, we will also find these very high later in the PvP tier list. Um, 
very important also to note there is Artemis compared to Cyclops. Um, it's a complete different playstyle. It's a complete different scenario. Um, we already talked about the Cyclops. Let's talk quickly a little bit about the Artemis. It is completely defensive oriented. So your attack is not as boosted as for like the Cyclops. But you also run um, a lot more warships. You do not have um, a small number. You have a huge number of warships. Ten times as much as with the Cyclops. Um, and especially when you compare then um, this kind of fighting style, um, when you fight against a cruiser, it's very likely that you need a lot of hits to kill a cruiser and there's not really much um, overkill, not really much damage that you lose by shooting at one. When you shoot with heavy weapons that have a long cooldown um, against frigates, as frigates are so numerous, there are so many of them, and they have little life compared to the other warships, it is very likely, especially when you have slow weapons, that you do have quite a big overkill. Um, meaning, if you do have weapons that do shoot slowly, it can happen that a lot of your damage is going into into the air. You, you just blow it away. Um, if we take a look, I think this should be already a good example. Um, power load speed, damage output. Ah, no, we don't have it written. Ah, here we have it. Um, cooldown 1.5 seconds for this laser. Let's take a look. Um, if we look here, cooldown 2.5 seconds. Um, let's take a look what we do have when we go to the last tier. Cooldown 3 seconds. So, as you see, the higher we go, the longer we do have cooldowns. Let's take a look what we do have for the missile type. Honestly, I didn't. I never really checked it. It's also only 1.5 seconds. But if we talk about a 3 seconds cooldown, and you might um, do some overkill here, um, it's 1200 attack. You have to add all the attack bonuses you get. That's at least like 200, 300 additional percent. So you do around four or five thousand damage with this. If you now shoot against um, a frigate that might have only, where do we have it? HP, 2000 HP. So we also get our buffs there. We get armor, shield. So let's say maybe the first three hits are hitting the frigate and the force hits then will finish it off. It might be that 900, 1000, 3000 of your damage are just going into nothing. And um, yeah, that's also one of the reasons why, at least for some players, frigates seem to be so much better than everything else. So, but no matter which of the flagships you choose, um, most important is you choose something you like um, and that works with your playstyle. Um, I think if you take any of the top tier flagships, you will be fine no matter what. And you will always find someone who tells you this flagship is better than the other. Um, it will also depend on like alliance buff, systems buff you have and so on and so on. The crew members you have, that's also maybe something to mention, um, especially when we talk about um, end game and we talk about tier 10. If you use some certain crew members, they just um, hit perfectly into this. We do have Pruno with missile weapons and total warship attack, which is a really great um, captain if you run missiles. So um, who would run missiles on tier 10 if we take a quick look? Luckily, we do not have to worry about the flagship anymore because the flagships have been changed into um, into um, warship attack at all. So um, that would be a perfect match for destroyers, which means this is really, really great combination with the Hades. Um, we do have the same option for laser weapons, which would fit perfectly later than for our Cyclops. For the Cyclops, we would have Molly increasing total warship HP and laser weapons. And um, that's also really, really nice fit, also offensive. 
for our frigates, we do get additional armor, which um, maybe not exactly the one you're looking for. Unfortunately, there's no legendary crew member that increases um, kinetic weapons. We do have Eldritch here that can in who can increase kinetic weapons. But um, yeah, so just wanted to also tell you this. So um, it all depends on your overall setup, how you prefer to play, what buffs you have, and um, really what you like to do. Um, but that doesn't mean that suddenly an Argo is getting a better flagship than a Prometheus when it comes to PvE. So um, don't get me wrong there. I don't want to say anything like that. Um, so yeah. I hope you liked the overview. Um, tomorrow I will upload the video about the PvP tier list. Um, and yeah, then you get a total overview and can also check which flagships are good in both tier lists so um, that you can choose something that works in both cases, at least for, for your main fleet. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, so yeah, give the video a thumbs up if you like it. Um, subscribe to the channel, join us on Discord. Don't forget to leave your comment in the video about um, tell me how to spend and the lucky crew recruit. That's a video with the two mollies on the thumbnail. Um, you probably remember I am going to spend um, some money there based on the comments you are leaving me. And um, yes, and I see you all on the next video again.